hey friends and welcome back to the channel for another furniture makeover i'm so excited to be back i know i've been gone for so long so i appreciate you guys for sticking around and i'm excited because i got some new friends over here so welcome if you're new my name is ebony i'm a furniture artist and i specialize in taking neglected pieces of furniture and turning them into something beautiful so that's exactly what i'm going to be doing on today i'm going to transform this piece into something unrecognizable and this is actually going to be a custom piece for a friend of mine now don't get any ideas because custom work isn't a normal thing around here but on this particular day i was feeling really confident about this piece and i agreed to it so it's going to serve as an entryway table in her new home and i'm really excited so let's get into this transformation So per usual, I'm going to start by removing the hardware and then I'm going to remove the drawer track as well as the wooden block that's on the inside of this piece and I'm going to remove that using my heat gun and then lastly I'm going to remove the backing of this piece as well. So once I removed all of the loose dust, I went ahead and just cleaned this entire piece with soap and water. I was a little unsure of myself, but I figured it's already pretty damaged, so, so what's the worst that can happen? Okay, so now it was time to go ahead and tackle this top. So I did some research earlier this week, and I found that with water damage, you're just gonna go ahead and sand it nice and flush. Now, if I could give you any advice, I would just encourage you to just go for it. Like, don't hold back. I don't know if you can tell, but I was very cautious and I was very intimidated. I used a 180 grit sandpaper. If I could go back in time, I think I would use something much stronger, more like an 80 grit sandpaper, and I would have just went for it. But um, I ended up getting through it and I had to go back and almost like double work. You'll see that a little bit later, but this is what it's looking like now. And then I had to do a quick repair. I noticed that the top was kind of coming a loose and I really didn't know how to get in there and like nail it back together. So I just used some wood glue and I just weighed it down from the bottom. So for this piece, my client's only request is that I make it more modern. So as you can see, these legs are very dated. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them using my heat gun.
I went ahead and ordered some legs on Amazon and that's what you see me working on here. Now this is what the leg looks like when it comes ordered. Um, I tried to get measurements that was close enough to what I was actually looking for. They weren't exact, obviously, but in order to kind of work my way around that, I added some Bondo on the foot of the leg to get the length that I wanted, and then I went ahead and sanded it to get the width that I needed. And I had to go ahead and curve them so that it could look more natural to the piece, and I think I did a pretty good job. So this is how I formed that extra half inch on the foot of the leg. I just used some frog tape to kind of give myself a mold and then I used my Bondo. So now that I have them both sanded to my liking, it's time to attach them. So my first attempt, I'll just go ahead and say, was a complete fail. So please don't try this at home. But I went ahead and I bought some contact cement and it absolutely did not work. Okay, so plan B, which essentially should have been plan A, was to go ahead and use the metal pegs that the legs come with when you order them. So I went ahead and put that leg in there. Now there's a little gap, which is why I tried doing the contact cement to begin with. But I just went ahead and filled that in with the Bondo. And then the next morning, this is what it's looking like. I have a lot more peace about it knowing that it's nice and sturdy it's not gonna fall off and that just made me feel really good now the lines aren't perfectly straight so I did go back in and do some more sanding but right now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys the scuff sanding process so let's get into it Okay, so during that scuff sanding process is when I realized that the water damage was worse than I thought. So it started to expose itself on the side of the, of the entryway table, on the base, on the doors. I mean, it was everywhere. And I kind of, at the time, I didn't think much of it. But after I finished priming, I freaked out. So the next clip that you'll see, it's not gonna be the most clear because I was in panic mode and I did not set up my tripod, but I'm gonna just try to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So you see like the raised areas, the brown spots, this was everywhere. It was like an itis. It was really bad. So I was like, what do I do? How am I gonna fix it? So I grabbed the nearest thing, which was a ruler and some paintable caulk and I smeared it all over and then I sanded it back and I repeated this until I got a nice smooth surface. So it took about two days. Um, I'm not even gonna say it's perfect at this point, but it is much better. Here is day two, I'm putting on my last coat of primer. I decided to roll it at this point because I'm just about completely out of primer, um, but I think it worked well and yeah, so that's pretty much that. Okay, so real quick, I actually wanted to just pop in and let you guys know that the reason for all of this water damage in the first place is because this piece has actually survived a fire. Okay, so next step is to add some shelves. So that's why I took out the drawer tracks. Now I went down to Lowe's and I'm so proud of myself because I did all of these measurements by myself and measurements, I'm telling you, that's my kryptonite. I just can't seem to get measurements right, but I, I got them right. So I did have to do a little bit of sanding to make some of the sides fit in more flush, um, but I just used my electric sander and an 80 grit sandpaper and I just sanded it down off camera. But here I am just adding this trim piece to the front. Now it worked out so perfectly that this was literally a piece that I had left over as scrap wood. So I, I just had to cut it to length and it fit nice and snug. So I used some wood glue and my staple gun. And yeah, there you go. Now, as we prep for paint, I'm gonna go ahead and sand back everything with a 400 grit sandpaper. If you haven't been using 400 grit sandpaper, you need to try it, it will change your life. I'm telling you, this is literally my favorite sandpaper grit. It gives you the most smooth finish. So I do that, I blow away all of my sanding dust, I make a phone call so that they can mix my paint, and I got the, the worst news ever, the paint was on back order. 
So I tried to keep the right spirit and I was just like, okay, what else can I do while I wait for the paint to get back in stock? And so I measured my hardware. Again, measurements are not my thing. So I struggled with that greatly. Um, so I just turned the camera off at that point and I moved on to the back of this piece. So as you guys saw earlier, I removed the back. I ordered this, what I thought was pill and stick wallpaper on Amazon. It's gorgeous. I first seen it over on Instagram and I knew I had to try it. And at this point I realized it wasn't pill and stick. Okay, so I was stressed. And then I found this easy tack in my garage. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't get the results I was looking for. Maybe I should have sprayed both surfaces. I only sprayed the board just because I thought it would be easier. Um, ultimately, I had to come back in with some Mod, uh, I'm sorry, Mod Podge a couple days later. So it ended up working out, but when I tell you I was stressed, <laughs> I was stressed. Okay, Amazon. I don't know why you have to stress me out. Hey guys, so I'm popping in from the future to let you guys know that the wallpaper was not giving what I needed it to give. I had to unassemble the entire piece, order something different, and you'll see what I ordered at the end of the video. Good morning, everyone. Today is the big day. I need to adjust these mirrors, child, because my husband, we can't see the same. Um, but today's the day I'm getting my paint and I'm so excited. We've all been waiting very patiently. So I'm down, I'm on my way down to Dun Edwards right now and I'm just really excited. So thank you all for your patience. I've been patient along with you guys, but it's time and I'm so excited. So just stay tuned and we'll get started in just a moment. Okay, you guys, introducing the paint that I have been so patiently waiting for. This is Evo Eclipse. Now, it's by Gemini. It's a water-based lacquer. And to be honest, I don't really know all of what that means. I just know I like the way that it applies and I love the way that it dries. So it gives you a nice hard finish overnight and it's just beautiful. So um, one thing I did notice about this paint is I probably should not allow it to sit in my gun for any amount of time. I should just probably use it and then clean out the gun immediately um, so that's what I'll do going forward but other than that I really like this paint again I love the way it dries I feel like across the board black paint seems to go on really weird kind of bubbly I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about but it absolutely dries flawlessly so I'm gonna do two coats of paint and then I'll be done and I'll put everything back together and you guys will get to see the reveal. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are as well. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Love you guys. See you soon. Thank you. 